Hey YouTube, so I am 5432-1-ing this video. Uh, what do I mean by that? Um, uh, I've never read the book by Mel Robbins. It's the five second rule. Uh, uh, there's a five seconds countdown, five, four, three, two, one. It's the idea, and I may have this wrong, but I think this is a general idea, in that uh, when you have something in your head, like if you wanna do something, you have five seconds to get it done, right? So if you're motivated enough to uh, you know, write a song or to make a video or to approach somebody and speak with that person because maybe you find that person interesting or there's something about that person that you know, um, you know, gravitates you know, towards you, uh, then you have five seconds to do it because after five seconds, then uh, that feeling, and in Spanish they say las ganas, they just go away, all right? so. Uh, so you have to count down in your head five four three two one like a rocket ship and just do it just get up like uh, off of your butt and just get it done so this is what I'm basically doing now with this video because uh, for about the like the last hour and a half to two hours I've been thinking of a lot about credit also doing some research on inflation and also wanted to expand a little bit on the last video that I made which was about how credit affects our lives whether we recognize it or not or whether we accept it or not it's something that um, is uh, just part of our lives okay and um, I just want to uh, prove once again I'm big on proof I'm big on logic right so uh, just so you know in, um, in college I studied philosophy one of the classes I took actually I took two classes one was logic the other one was symbolic logic that really did train my mind to kind of um, you know um, I guess like make uh, decisions logically to do things logically and uh, you know when I hear arguments you know for or against ideas uh, whether they're um, political ideas uh, 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 religious ideas I like to see logic so what I like to do is so my, my point is I want to you know in another way prove to you logically how credit and money affects your life okay so this is I've been thinking about this for like the last like I said I don't know have two hours and I wanted to just share this with everybody uh, to help you guys out to help people out because I know that it's affected my life and in a good way in a positive way and I like to share that feeling of joy with everybody so uh, the first so what I did right now right before I, I started this video is uh, you may not be able to read my, my chicken scratch over here <clears throat> but I wrote down some notes uh, just for me so that I don't forget what I want to talk about. So the first thing I want to talk about, I guess, and I'm just going to go in whatever order is um, this over here, something called a fat Sam. So if uh, for, for y'all who don't know, um, I used to live down in New Brunswick uh, from about early 2000 to the middle of 2005. All right. Uh, I had a wonderful time over there. Um, I, I uh, in a way, like I love that city because uh, in a way, like I, uh, I, I um, identify as, uh, you know, I went there as a young man and left there as a man. And so I grew up a lot over there. Um, now, um, in New Brunswick, you find a university called Rutgers University. It's the largest university in, in uh, New Jersey. And I lived uh, just a few blocks away from downtown uh, Rutgers from, uh, from George Street, all right? Uh, you know, it was. I lived really close to the State Theater, and uh, so that was also close to the um, uh, uh, to the New Brunswick campus, and um, of Rutgers. And what I would do every now and then, you know, back then when I was like 23, 24 years old, uh, and I didn't get tired <laughs> at 10 p.m., I'd go to the grease trucks, right? And I don't know if anybody's ever gone to the grease trucks, but they are delicious. They sell sandwiches over there. Uh, they sell, you know, fat. You know, you know. Usually, like the names of the sandwiches would begin in fat, but the one that I I always used to get, and I just was there last week, is a fat Sam, right? Now the fat Sam include it's it's basically a cheesesteak sandwich. It's got fries in there, lettuce, tomatoes. It's also got chicken, and I love it. All right, but I remember back in two thousand and one, in two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand two, I used to pay four dollars and fifty cents for that sandwich. I, I remember that. I, I I vividly remember going over there and. You know, paying four dollars fifty cents, and then I remember when it went up to five bucks, and then five fifty. All right, now this was back in two thousand, two thousand one, right? So it's almost about twenty years ago. So, uh, as I mentioned, now today is what June second, June third, two thousand and twenty, two thousand twenty one. I was there just last week, 
okay? And now the grease trucks are not there anymore where, where they were parked at, I think it was the corner of maybe College Avenue or College Street and Hamilton or Easton around there, um, where they were parked at, uh, um, um, I, I think the university developed um, uh, housing for the students and on the, on the ground level, there's businesses. Now, one of the business there is, I think it's called Are You Hungry, right? Uh, R U as in like Rutgers University, R like the letters R U then hungry, and so instead of the grease truck being there, they moved into this um, into the store, right? So I, I went there last week, and the Fat Sam cost nine dollars and fifty cents. I think I, I may be um, I, I may have this like a little high, but it was it was about nine dollars and nine dollars and fifty cents. Now, in twenty years, that is at least a 100% increase in price, all right? So when I mean that that money and finance and credit affects you, it affects you, all right? This is just one item. This is just one good that people can buy, all right? It's just a sandwich. Now, why is the price high? Okay, once again, it's inflation, but it's not just inflation, right? It's also the cost of what of what you're buying, right? So maybe the cost of potatoes for the French fries went up. Maybe the cost of of, of the beef for the steak went up, or maybe the cost of of produce like uh, like the lettuce and the tomato that's in there, right? Or these vegetables they went up. The wheat went up for the bread, right? Uh, the cost also of the labor, okay, for the individuals who are working there went up. Maybe the rent, you know, is higher now over there. Well, they weren't. Pay I don't know if they were paying rent. They had a truck back then, and you know, about about twenty years ago. But my point is this, it's a 100% increase, all right? And that absolutely proves that we are being affected by what's going on in this world. And you know what the thing is, we have to accept this, okay? So when, you know, I meet individuals who are saying, well, you know, I, I you know, inflation isn't too bad. Come on, people, please. Don't you remember when pizza was just a dollar or a dollar fifty? Don't you remember when a twenty ounce or sixteen ounce uh, Coke was, you know, a, like seventy five cents? I remember when I was a kid in high, in uh, in grammar school going to a little bodega that was like at the same corner of my school. I'd get four cookies in like in a little plastic bag for twenty five cents. Okay, yeah, <laughs> and, and and now you can't do that. It's like a dollar. Okay, my point is. Things are are are, are uh, the 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 price of goods are always going to increase, and that's because of inflation. Well, that's one reason. Okay, now how do you battle inflation? Okay, uh, now once again, you know the, I'm not here to as like a financial guru. It's just one of these things that I kind of learned the last, especially year during the coronavirus, where I was I don't want to say stuck here in my office, but I would come here to my office, and you know one thing that I really wanted to learn was credit right like how do how do people how are people affected by credit and the reason why one of the the big reason why we'll learn this is because you know i do real estate and many times i refer buyers to uh um uh to loan officers and <clears throat> and they run their credit and and for whatever reason they don't have good enough credit or their credit score isn't high or they have this and that but i was always told uh you know what um he, you know this individual or individuals cannot purchase a property because of their credit and i would ask well like what can you do about it well they just need to work on it was was the response and i would think well what exactly needs to happen how can their credit get better how can they get rid of you know this how can they lower their utilization rate i i i didn't know so what happened when the pandemic began i said to myself you know what i'm gonna learn this all right because now i got like a little bit more time on my hand Everybody thinks that the world is coming to an end, so you know. And I, I and I just thought that this was going to be beneficial for my real estate career, and and it is, and it actually made me, you know, realize other, you know, you know, just greater things, you know, not just about real estate, but just in terms of finance and, and money management. So I, I want to kind of go over um, <clears throat> how the credit game, and once again, this is what I mentioned um, in the last video. Sorry, my eye is um, for whatever itching right now. We, we, we're all playing the game, right? We're all playing this credit game. All of us, no matter, once again, whether you realize it or not, and if you do realize it, whether you agree with it or not, we're all part of the, the credit game. And also, we're all part of inflation, all right? So how can we work with that, 
okay so we know it's already a thing right like it's it's happening right now we have to accept it right so how can we work with it so uh what i wanted to bring up was also that uh please know and this is something that i i just saw online i did some research that uh for the last 20 years <clears throat> there's been uh an average uh increase of inflation of 2.1 percent per year in other words if you multiply that by 20 years that's a 40 percent uh increase um of of uh of inflation uh in other words so for uh what a hundred dollars costs whatever costs a hundred dollars back in 2000 it costs and this is what i got online as well costs 148 dollars and 47 cents in 2019 when we're in 2021 so obviously this is going to cost more so that these numbers do go hand in hand with the 2.1 percent increase right why because you know 20 years have gone by so 20 right times 2.1 all right that equals 40.2 right am i correct let me get my calculator so 20 times 2.1 yeah no it's 42 sorry about that it's 42 42 right so 20 years at 2.1 interest rate okay i mean interest of inflation of increase is 42 percent. okay so that 100 whatever you can purchase for 100 dollars back in the year 2000 all right now you have to pay 148 dollars 47 cents 19 years later so that that is about a 42 percent increase so it's actually a 48 percent increase but you know it's about the same right so so just keep that in mind right and the reason why i want you to keep this in mind is because there are many people out there and i and once again this is another reason why i want to bring this up is because i meet many 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 individuals who say you know what i have my money i have my cash safely stored at my home all right or it's in a non-interest bearing bank account people please understand this if you do this you're actually losing money <laughs> all right so for example if you put a hundred thousand dollars all right in you know like let's say in uh, like underneath your bed right if you put that a hundred thousand dollars in cash underneath your bed and it's safely stored uh, in the year 2000 okay that money right now would be worth about sixty thousand dollars okay it, it's not it, it, it that you have to have your money working for you you just cannot put it away now why is it worth sixty thousand dollars because it's the cost of goods is what you can do with that money right so you know remember things are more expensive so the amount of fat sams that you're able to buy you know back in the year 2000 all right all right are going to be greater than if you were to buy the amount now in the year 2021 all right with that same hundred thousand dollars now i'm not saying buy fat sams i'm just saying in general the the amount of goods that you're able to purchase with that hundred thousand whatever amount that is a thousand dollars ten thousand dollars a hundred bucks it's you know you can buy less now why because of inflation so please keep that in mind and you know towards you know what while i'm speaking in this video now remember i do real estate so i come across a lot of opportunities where you can actually make your money work for you and if you want to speak about it just give me a call so that we can work something out i mean i come across a lot of deals houses uh opportunities to buy um income producing uh uh, uh properties where you can actually put your money to work, okay? So, uh, so yeah, so you know, keep that in mind, right? So that you know, you you don't just do nothing with your money; do something with it, okay? Um, now, remember, you're not just battling; you're not just battling inflation every single year. You're also battling, okay? The and and this is the money that you have in your pocket after you pay taxes. So, like, let's say you're somebody who, you know, works at a company, right? Like whatever company it is. So, you know, you're making $1,000 a week. You're not gonna get, a, you're not gonna deposit $1,000 uh, 
um, you know, it's it, you know, like your check is probably gonna come out to like let's say seven hundred bucks, right? Why or seven fifty, eight hundred dollars? Why? Because there's taxes that are taken out. So you know, let's talk about that money that's that's that that you're getting, right? All right. Um, now you're now you have that money, and what are you gonna do with it? You just have to live with it, right? You you have to you have to. Uh, when I mean live with it, you have to utilize it for things that you need to live. All right. So um, now. Let's say you want to go bowling, right? Or let's say you want to go out to eat, or let's say you're shopping for groceries, or you need new shoes, or you want to buy a book, right? Here in the state of New Jersey, the sales tax is 6.625%, right? Now, think about this, people, right? You're at, we have to pay 6.25% interest rate. I mean, not interest rate, taxes on every single product that is purchased here in the state of New Jersey, right? That's automatic. Now, what is also happening to your dollar? It's decreasing in price by an average of 2.1%, 2.10%, right? So what's really happening, seven, two, five, what's really happening is in a way you, you are paying the taxes and you're paying for the for the um, for the inflation and it comes out to 8.725%. And remember, this is after you pay your 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 taxes. This is after, you know, you have those taxes that are taken out from 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 your paycheck, right? So, imagine you're working hard all week, 40, 50 hours a week, whatever. You know, you come home, you're tired, and you have x amount of dollars in your bank account it's not producing any like any any income is just sitting there right and then when you go buy something now you don't see this happening all right the reason why you don't see this happening is the same reason why uh um you know you you don't see the um you don't see the earth eroding right so i don't know if you know this but you know every single second okay the earth is eroding okay there's something called erosion Right. And there's, you know, just a bit by bit by bit, inches by inches and by, and by inches, the water. This is just an example. Water erodes the dirt. So now your your beach or your shore is getting, you know, shorter. Right. Uh, for, uh, another example is like tectonic plates. Right. So th they're moving all the time. They're always moving. Right. Now, when they move a lot, that's when you have an earthquake. But but they're always, always moving. You don't realize it. Why? Because it's moving very very slowly this is the same thing so you don't realize that you're moving right it's the same thing with with the earth right you know we wake up in the morning you know th this earth is rotating like thousands of miles per hour right and not that i think hundreds of miles per hour but you don't realize it why because we're so small we're such a small part uh, uh, of the planet earth that we don't real and the earth is so big but we don't realize that it's going around and around and you don't realize also that the earth is going hundreds of thousands of miles you know around the sun right but it's happening but we don't realize like you know we, we're not feeling the force of the you know thousand miles per hour okay same thing with this you're not feeling it but it's happening it's happening and please people you know there are things that you can do to combat this okay so you know i put up these videos here so that you know people you know number number one are aware so you know knowledge is power you know they, they will be you know people hopefully you know if this video is is shown to more individuals you will understand that you can actually do something about this that you can combat this and this by the way don't look at this as an enemy all right this this is facts we, we got to pay taxes there's inflation embrace it that's it okay we can't you know all complain and do nothing about it all right which by the way brings me to the next thing i want to talk about which is my brother andres because months back many months back he and i were talking about um uh, about raising his credit score right and um he told me that he had a uh um he has an account with Amer with american express and you know we were looking at his credit okay I'm, and we were here at the office and I said, hey, listen, you know, you could do this, blah, blah, blah. And look, maybe you can speak with American Express. If they do, you know, you can request a um, uh, an increase in your line of credit, okay? 
you know, uh, if they don't do a, a, a hard inquiry, if they just do a soft inquiry, then that's even better because it won't take, you know, it won't, you know, take a hit on your credit report. And even if it did, you know, his points would have maybe not even decreased. And if it did, it wouldn't have been too much. Anyway, so you know what he did, all right? So instead of uh, him saying, you know what, well, I got all these other things I need to do first and this and that, all right? He got off his ass, all right? Actually, he didn't even do that. He just made the phone call to American Express. And I was so happy about that because he actually did something about it. The reason why I'm saying this is because I do sit down over here with many individuals, right? And I am so happy to help people out with the credit because what I know can really help people out and change their lives. But when, when my brother told me that he got on the phone, he told me the next day, he got on the phone, he spoke with American Express, they doubled his line of credit. I think it was it went from like ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars, whatever. Which made now his 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 uh, his total line of credit greater, which now decreased his utilization rate. He told me later on, a few weeks later after that particular account, you know, uh, reported to the credit agencies that his credit score did go up, and it went up significantly. I think it was thirty or forty points. I think. All right. My point is this, he is doing something about his credit and he's doing something to combat this because now he can use his credit card, all right, uh, to purchase items, right? So remember, everything that we purchase is at 6.625%. Now, he doesn't live here in Jersey, he lives in California, but let's just say he lives in, in, uh, in New Jersey. So everything he purchases, right, is 6.625%. That same American Express card, all right, um, whenever he buys something, it's a 2% um, cash back on every purchase that he makes, right? Which is like doing this. All right, I got to go and buy something. I know I'm going to get taxed at 6.625%. But American Express is giving me back 2%. So in reality, what's happening is that I'm not getting taxed 6.625%. I'm really getting taxed 4.625% right so now he's leveraging his credit to pay less taxes in a way right so and keep this in mind okay that's just for that one card right um i've made other videos where i mentioned with amazon right if you have decent credit you can get an amazon uh uh credit card right Every time you make a purchase on Amazon, you get 5% off of every single purchase. 5%. Home Depot, if you get a Home Depot credit card, every time you go over there, you get 5% off of everything you buy there. You buy a candy bar for a dollar, you're really paying 95 cents, right? You're buying tools and lumber and, and other materials, comes out to 10 grand, you're really paying $9,500, okay? five percent so now that's six point six two five percent taxes that you are paying because it's at five percent right so six point six two five percent so minus the five percent you're really paying taxes of one point six two five percent in a way right like i said like you're not seeing that money but like it's it's not like it's not a registering at the register okay where you're purchasing it but you're gonna see that money back you're gonna see that money once the month is over and for example um, uh, what Amazon does is they say okay this is the amount this is five percent of all the purchases that you made all right how do you want this okay do you want to credit it back you know towards your balance uh, or uh, what's the other, or you could get points. I forget. I, I never do the points. I always do the cash back. I always say, okay, I want to credit it back to my balance. Why? Because I, I want to pay it off. All right. So I get the 5% off, right? Lowe's, okay. Which is like Home Depot, 5% off. All right. There's other credit cards out there, right? Costco, Costco, I think it's 2% or 3% off, uh, off of everything that you purchase there at Costco. I think they also uh, provide like a certain percentage off with gasoline. And so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I have made, it's, 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 it's almost a habit now that, you know, whenever I purchase anything, I don't care what it is. I mean, across the street from me, there's a Colombian place, right? 
and I bought a can of soda, like one of those Colombian sodas, for that I think it was like a dollar twenty-five cents. I used my PayPal, Mastercard. I, I, you know, I had I had the money in my pocket. I had the cash in my pocket, but I wanted to use my PayPal, my Mastercard. Why? Because they get two percent off of everything. All right. Now, when do I not use my credit card? Whenever I go to a store and they and they charge me a fee for using the credit card. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense, especially if it's like a three percent fee, because then I'm I'm actually losing money. So I just use my cash. Or if I go to a gasoline station, right? Sometimes you go to a gasoline station, you want to get gas. You know, it's uh, you know, three dollars for a gallon, or it's three twenty or three dollars and twenty cents. Uh, you know, um, um, I mean, like three dollars for cash. Uh, if it's cash that you that, that you utilize or three dollars and twenty cents if you utilize a credit card. It doesn't make sense to, to pay with a credit card, it just makes sense to pay with cash. Okay. So um so uh so so see what I'm trying to do over here is, is introduce to people that you can utilize your credit to make you money so that you're paying less of the stuff that you have to pay for anyway, right? What do we have to pay for? Well, what's that saying? What are the two things that you're absolutely sure of? Death and taxes. So the taxes are the 6.625. If, if uh, Once again, with Amazon, at 5%, uh, 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 like at, at a 5% discount, you're really paying 1.625%, right? Now you have this inflation over here. Like, what are you gonna do about it? People, use, utilize your money. Have your money work for you okay so what i'm gonna uh what else do i have over here oh okay so we went over my brother credit the, the game the taxes the average inflation 2.1 percent increase were always part of the credit game my fat sam story by the way try the fat sams they're 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 amazing there's other sandwiches there but for me i, I always get the fat sam uh the cost of goods right um so you know what you could purchase back in the year 2000 for 100 dollars is now worth $148, and we all know that, right? We all know these stories. How many of us, our moms and dads bought houses, you know, 30, 40, 30 or 40 years ago for 40 grand, or 50 grand, or 60 grand, right? You know, uh, or they talk about how rent, how much rent was, you know, back then, oh, you know, like you hear the stories, oh, back then I got a, I got a two bedroom apartment in, you know, in Passaic County, and I was only paying $300. You can't do that now, why? Because of inflation, all right? Because cost of goods have increased, all right? Um, gasoline, they'll, they'll tell you the stories, how, how gasoline was 50 cents a gallon, less than that. How a loaf of bread <laughs> was was 50 cents, right? How a pie, I remember when pies were seven bucks, you know, a pie for a pie of pizza, all right? So everything is increasing, okay? Now, how can you combat this? How can, you know, stuff that is already happening, right? Please, uh, be aware of your assets. Okay, so when I mean assets, I don't mean just money because you know I'll get people to say all right. Well, you know what Rob? I don't have the money to invest in things, right? Uh, I you know, I, I you know, I, I live paycheck to paycheck It's okay. Utilize your credit. All right now I'm gonna give like my little uh, I guess uh, marketing over here in terms of real estate and I mentioned it a few minutes ago there are opportunities out there to make money, you know, by utilizing your money, right? In which you can make six, seven, eight, or nine percent return on your investment, return on the money that you will invest in the real estate deal. Okay. Now think about what you would be doing, right? You are combating this. This is what you're doing. Because if the money that you have in mind to possibly invest, if it's not doing anything, you're actually losing money. <laughs> you're, it's, it's becoming less valuable. So put it to work, all right? So, uh, um, so you know, the, the, as I mentioned, the first thing I wanted to uh, say was, so if you don't have any money right now to invest, that's okay. Another asset that you have, if you don't have the money in the bank, is you, is your time, all right? is in a way your space time, right? That's uh, something that's like scientific, you know, we're all in the fabric of space time and we take up space and time and utilize your time, all right? To make yourself more valuable, all right? Work on your credit, all right? 
um, because if you don't have the money now, you can make it l later, all right? If you, if you invest in yourself, all right, and make your, and, and increase your credit score, all right, and you could do that. You could, there's ways of doing it without spending any money, all right? You could combat this. Once you combat this, once you make, well, once you, like, in a way you eliminate, you know, or decrease the taxes that you have to pay, all right, that will put more money in your hand so that you can now make more money, all right? And a whole world of opportunities will open up to you, all right? So, uh, yeah, I think that's all I wanted to talk about, I think. Um, you know, give me a call. My number is 908-432-2526. Rob Savori, uh, I'm not even, I mean, I work as a real estate agent. I just wanted to make this video, not as a real estate agent. Well, but more as like a individual who, you know, has access to opportunities to make more money uh, through, you know, through real estate. All right. Um, think about it, people. Think about it. This is stuff that we, we, we're already living with. Right. All right. So you might as well combat it. You, you got to get it done, you know, <laughs> because I, I also hear so many, so many stories of, of once I think I mentioned that people just living paycheck to paycheck, not having enough for rent, not having enough for gas, not having enough to pay for their cell phone bills, not having enough for a down payment for a car, all right? Not having enough, um, you know, to pay for like a vacation or even like not having enough to, you know, for, for their children to uh, go to the schools that they wanna go to, whatever it is, not, like not having enough to eat, all right? It doesn't have to be like that, you know? We, we live in an amazing country where we're being given the opportunity, all right, to take advantage of all of this, all right? And it takes work. It's a lot of hard work, all right? But it's absolutely worth it, all right? Uh, just so you know, um, I do not subscribe to the belief that, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, 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 utilizing credit is, is bad for you, right? Or that working with banks is bad. I, I, I do not believe that. Banks, in my opinion, and based on my experience and the research that I've done, they want to work with us. They want to make our life better. They also want to make their lives better as well. But you know what? Guess what? That is called collaboration. That's called collaboration. There's no big bad banks, all right? They're, and usually the people who say, oh, there's big bad banks, it's because they're the ones who are not paying their bills, okay? And I know that stuff happens in life we're not kind of going off on a tangent here but but you know if, if you're able to have good credit and maintain your finances and not overpay or uh, or, or 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 you know or some people what they do is they take out so much credit you know they have you know so much like such a high credit line they start maxing out on all their credit cards then yeah it becomes a big bad bank right but if you live according to your means then you'll be okay and you'll make, you'll actually make more money because a bank will give you more, right? I was thinking about something today also was, you know, if every single person that, you know, um, shops at Home Depot, right? Uh, at home, uses a Home Depot credit card, all right? And, you know, uh, that bank, I think it's uh, City Cards, no, it's Citibank that finances the Home Depot credit card, right? they would probably <laughs> increase that cash back from 5% to like 9% or 10%. Why? Because there's so many people that are using it that it becomes competitive. They would want to become competitive with their competitors like Lowe's and whatever other, you know, chain of, of, you know, of, of, of these types of goods are, right? Same thing with, with Amazon. Look, you, you're paying for stuff on Amazon already, right? And most people, they have a link to their bank account, right? You might as well just, I mean, if you're gonna pay cash for it, just just at least get the 5% off. Can you imagine, once again, if, if, if I would say 50% of people would utilize their Amazon, you know, the, 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 this, this Amazon credit card to pay for, uh, for all of their purchases, okay? You, can you, you Amazon would would increase that cash back from five percent to maybe ten percent? Why? 
it's a demand, it's competition, right? These banks want to work with us, all right? So we have to utilize it. We have to work with them. We have to work on our credit, right? Give me a call. I am so happy. Like, you know, I have people come in here often, and we sit down, and we talk about credit. I check the credit report. You know, I, all I tell them is, like, look, you want to help me out? All right? Subscribe to my YouTube page because, you know, maybe one day I'll reach a million subscribers. I I, I, I don't know, maybe two million, and I'll, I'll be the next, like, you know, YouTube uh, like youtuber like like the like the, um uh the youtuber with the highest subscriber like su subscriptions right all right um I, I, it also makes me happy when i sit down with an individual and their life changes and I, and it takes a while for it to change but at least you know people are starting to uh notice that there's a difference that's happening in their lives so uh you know please reach out to me if you want to know more about this let's talk about this so i'm going to continue making these YouTube uh, videos so that people are aware of you know of, of how to take advantage of this now I, I may sometimes not have the time to explain you know uh, to each person you know how to take advantage of this this is why I make these videos check out my videos check out the other videos and see what it is that you can do to save yourself some money and then you know uh, before or after that come in here we'll sit down which we'll take a look at your credit report and see what we can do with it all right um, I think that's about it all right so i'm glad i made this video once again i did i for this is like the five second rule i just wanted to do it because it was something that i said you know what i'm not if i'm not gonna do it now i'm never gonna do it i just wanted to do it so uh anything else anything else oh real quick i have over here listen to the experts right uh, get advice from the successful imitate the wealthy and action based on research okay so uh, pretty much everything that I mentioned to you, um, I, you know, I follow these four rules, right? So listen to the experts. So um, wh why am I saying, like, why am I big on credit? Because the big companies, right, that started out with one person, you know, now they're 10,000 employees, right? They, they're the ones who I listen to and they say, this is what you should be doing with your money. This is what you should be doing with your credit. Okay. So. I'll give you an example, uh, Walmart, okay? So uh, we can all agree that Walmart has billions of dollars uh, available to, to do whatever they wanna do with it, right? Now, uh, Walmart, um, I'm pretty sure is still building, you know, their, their Walmart centers, right, their stores. All right, now, uh, Walmart can easily, you know, if they get approvals to construct a new store, they can easily just drop $20 million, if that's how much it costs to construct, to make the building, to pave the um, the parking lot, to pay for whatever else, shelves and all that, the lighting, electricity, all that stuff, right? But they don't do that, okay? You know what they do? They take out a construction loan and then a permanent loan so they can, you know, have uh, that building there. And they probably give 20% down payment, all right? Uh, now, why in the world would they do that if they have all the money in the world to just pay for it cash? You know why? Because they can utilize that cash to make more money somewhere else. Okay? Because they know that if they, you know, if, if a project costs $20 million and they have to give a $4 million down payment uh, to make this project happen, they can utilize a bank's loan, all right, at who knows, maybe 5 6% interest rate. Okay? And the other uh, 14 million, no, what is it, $16 million that they would have used uh, if it was cash to, to pay for the whole development, they're using it for something else. They're using it to make more money. These are the, these are the experts, people. These are the experts. I'm not telling you this. I'm, I'm telling you what I'm being told, right? So why would we do something that is contrary to what the experts are doing? Right, if, if we're not experts at this, so I'm, I'm going to do what the experts are doing. Right, get advice from the successful. All right, now I I can't get on my phone, all right, and go down my address book and you know contact a huge banker, um, you know uh, that that is extremely good with money. All right, but you know what they do? They make these videos. They also write books. All right, and. Even though they're not speaking with me, when I read their books or look or, or, or look at their videos, they're giving they're giving me advice, and I'm getting advice from the people who are success, successful in 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 that 
in, the, in that aspect, right? So I'm not gonna go to somebody who is really struggling with money and get financial advice from that person because they are not successful just yet, okay? They can be, but they are not successful. I'm not gonna, maybe they're good at something else and I'll get advice from them about that something else. But I'm not gonna get advice in terms of money you know, from that individual. I mean, I do real estate. I'm not gonna go to, you know, um, somebody who, who runs a bakery, okay, who's really good at baking and ask that person for real estate advice. That person may even tell me, oh yeah, you know, you should do this, you should do that, because you get that a lot, right? D don't, don't you get the lot? People's opinion, the people, people have opinions, the opinions are a dime a dozen, right? And, and, and they tell, oh yeah, you know, we should do this, you should do that. And they are, you know, they they're 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 postal workers right and they or they're uh or they pump gas or they uh, work with the city government or they are dentists or they are doctors they don't do real estate they just maybe watch a show on uh, you know uh on tv and now they're the real estate guru no no don't don't, don't, don't get advice from them for from the successful it's funny sometimes these individuals they, you know, like this is why real estate is a career, right? This is why there's even courses in college and actually master's courses, like graduate courses in real estate, because this is real, like this is tough stuff, right? But, you know, sometimes you get, you know, individuals who, you know, watch, you know, these these uh, shows on TV and they think they're experts, right? Uh, that that I, I want to compare that to like, let's say, uh, you know, uh, you know, me watching, a uh, whole bunch of YouTube videos uh, uh, and seeing how Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo play soccer. And now I can go on the soccer field and play soccer and think I'm the best. It doesn't work like that, <laughs> okay? It doesn't work like that at all, all right? Uh, imitate the wealthy, right? So, I, I, and I put the, the wealthy here, not the rich. There's a difference, right? Rich is when you have a lot of money. Wealthy is when you utilize that money. When you have that money, you're, you're already rich, but now you're utilizing that money to make more money or right, to, to open up other opportunities. So imitate what they do. So see, like learn from their lifestyle. Look, I'll give, well, another example is uh, my son and I, about a year ago, my son Eddie and I, we read the autobiography of Ben Carson. Okay, now Ben Carson is a doctor and a very successful doctor, very intelligent doctor. And he was the first, I think, person in human history to separate conjoined twins, uh, I think in the brain, like their head, you know, uh, it was uh, uh, um, uh, babies or children who were born, uh, twins and their heads were together. So he was able to cut it. And, you know, I think the first time it happened, I think maybe one, uh, like one of the babies died and the other one lived and, you know, but he learned from that. But then after that, he was successful and he was the first person in human history to do it. Now he grew up in the hood. In Detroit okay but his mom and it was him and his brother and his mom and, and a single mom right his mom would, would would clean houses for people who were wealthy in the Detroit area right and what she would notice is that when she would clean these houses she would notice these two things she noticed a lot of things but she noticed these two things she noticed that the children of the wealthy family were always surrounded by books and they didn't have a TV. <laughs> okay. So what did she do? She got, she went back home. All right. To the apartment she was living in with her two kids. All right. Uh, and Ben Carson was, was, was a child. She got rid of the TV and surrounded Ben Carson and his brother with books. You imitate the wealthy. Imitate the wealthy. Learn something from them. Don't think, oh, yeah, you know, the wealthy, they're this and that. Hey, I mean, at, at one point, they were not wealthy, all right, uh, unless they grew into it, unless they, they were born into it. But even before that, you know, they were not wealthy. Look at John Rockefeller. He grew up super poor. Vanderbilt grew up super poor, all right? But, but the generations after John Rockefeller were born into it. But at one point, the family didn't have any money. Andrew Carnegie grew up super poor, all right? Uh, most of the people right now who are millionaires or billionaires, they grew up poor. So it's not like they, you know, were born into money, but what they did was they imitated the wealthy, okay? 
Uh, and the last thing is action based on research, which kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about logic, right? So, you know, um, uh, look at the research, right? Like what is some, like what makes sense, right? Don't just, um, you know, say, okay, well, I'm going to do this and, you know, hopefully it'll work out. Say, okay, what does the research show, All right? What is out there to, sh to, to prove that I can make my credit better or I can become more wealthy, all right? Don't just say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to do it my way. You know, I'm going to invent a new way. No, you know what? You know, um, first establish a foundation based on research and then do it your way. So give it like your little twist, all right? Uh, and that's it. So I know I, I said that I, I was going to finish this video about 15 minutes ago. I know it's a little bit long, but hopefully you, you've learned something from it. Uh, once again, uh, I'm Robert Savori. My phone number is 908-432-2526. If you kind of noticed from this video, I am very passionate about this. I really do want to help people out. I, 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 I go around, I drive around a lot, I observe a lot, and I know that people are struggling, and they don't have to. They really don't have to. We live in an amazing time right now in an amazing country where anybody can take advantage of this, where you have other entities other people who are willing to work with you as long as you're willing to work hard as well you you know you can work on your credit i'm saying credit because you know um it really is it's about the credit it's it's really all of this all of this you could combat by working on this on the credit game all right on credit you get this done a well you, your, your world will open up. If you work on this, you, you you will automatically and by default start to get better at other things as well. Things that you didn't even realize that you're happening. Like you're going to start to go to sleep earlier. You're going to start to read more. You're going to start to exercise more. You know, you, you're going to start to save more money. You're going to start to say, you know what, like now that I have more money, I'm not going to just waste it on, on crap, right? I want to invest it. I want to do something with it, all right? Uh, so... I'm here to help you out with this, all right? Stop by my office. I'm over here at 480 McBride Avenue in Patterson. If I'm not around, you know, give me a call. Before you come over, call me, text me, set up a meeting. I know sometimes I'm a little difficult to get in contact with. But for all you people who do not like to leave voicemails, <laughs> leave a voicemail, please, or text me because, you know, you call me and then, you know, uh, you finally get in contact with me. You're like, hey, Rob, I tried to call you like five times. I'm like, yeah. You and like a hundred other people, but I'm not gonna respond to like I I will never call anybody. Like if I get a missed phone call, I don't call back. All right, I I don't call back. If you leave a voicemail, I will call you back. If you text me, I will text you back. All right. Uh, so uh, I think that's about it. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment and I please stay tuned for the next video. Take care.